Hi there, this is Anmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to share with you the easiest way to add water and reflections in Photoshop and the way we are going to do that is by using a very special plugin. Now before you go, hold up, wait a minute, I don't want to pay for another plugin, well, don't worry, I've been using it for free ever since as well. So without any further ado, I'm super excited, I hope you are too, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The plugin that we are talking about right here is called Flood 2. And by the way, you can just go to their website and install a free trial. And to be honest, I've been using the free trial for more than two weeks and no limitations has shown up. Everything is working right there in the plugin. There is no limitation as to the amount of sliders you can move. It's just working as if I'm working on a full version. So it's free for now at least. I don't know what the limitations are. I don't know how long it's going to be free. But as of recording this video, the free trial is working as a full version. So all you got to do is to go to Flaming Peer website and click on free trials. Now inside of free trials, you will find Flood 2 right there. Just click on your operating system and download it. As <laughs> simple as that. Now once you unzip it, you will have these plugins and also it comes with a guide on how to install it. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is to paste it in the plugins folder. That's it. So back to Photoshop and let's get started. First of all, make sure that you've installed the plugin and restarted Photoshop. After that, we have to just set the scene. We have to apply the plugin separately to the subject and the background. And for that, we need to have the subject and the background separate. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. Now let's make a selection of the subject. Now to save time, we're just going to use select subject right there. So click on the quick selection tool right there and at the top you will see select subject and press Ctrl or Command J once you have an active selection. Now we have the subject on a brand new layer. Now if you want, you can take all the time in the world to make precise selections. Now after that, we have to make sure that in the background layer, we don't have the subject. So first of all, let's activate the selection again by holding the Ctrl or Command and clicking on the thumbnail of the subject. I just turned off that layer. Let's go to the background. Let's actually name this background. Now to remove the subject from the background, all we have to do is to just fill it. But before we fill it, make sure we give it some space. Otherwise, there might be some edges left behind. So let's just extend the selection by going to select modify and then expand right there and expand it by about 20 pixels. How do you feel about that? It's not much. Let's try that again by going to select modify and then expand. Let's choose 30 on top of this. This must be enough. Yes, it's pretty good. Now let's go to edit and then content aware fill. I'm going to leave it to defaults. And by the way, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop and you do not have dedicated content aware fill, just choose fill and then choose content aware from the drop down. Now default values are fine, just hit OK. Pretty good. Now it creates it on a brand new layer. First of all, press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. And let's merge both of these. So select the background, hold the Ctrl or Command, select the background copy in which we have the fill, press Ctrl or Command E to just merge it. All right. Now we have the background and the subject separate. Now we have to apply the plugin separately. Now keep in mind, unfortunately, Flood 2 is destructive. It does not work with smart objects. So you have to be very careful. If you want to have a duplicate of the bare background the way it is, make it now because in case anything goes wrong, you would have to apply it again. So press Ctrl or Command J just to have a duplicate of the background without the subject. This is just a backup. Let's choose the background again. Now let's go to filter, flaming beer and then flood. Now here the plugin is showing my last settings and by the way you can save anything as a preset by simply clicking on one of these empty circles. The circles which are already filled are already a preset that I previously created. The first and the most important slider right here is the horizon. So first of all we need to set the horizon the way it is. Now horizon can be set by that purple line that you see. I'm not sure or really sure whether you can see it. I'll try to zoom it in post. So set the horizon first. So I'm going to set it to about 45-ish, something like this, 47 is fine. Once the horizon is set, we need to set the offset. Now what is offset? Offset is where the water starts from. So the higher the offset, the further away the water starts from the horizon. So I'm just going to go to my previous settings, which was perfect for this. Now perspective is setting the perspective according to the lens of the camera. So if you just increase the perspective, it would be like you took this picture from a very wide angle lens. If you decrease the perspective, it would imitate a telephoto lens. The next one is altitude. And by the way, the explanation and description of all of these sliders are pretty simple and straightforward and can be easily found by clicking on this question mark. Once you click on it, 
it will explain very nicely and clearly what each setting does. Now, waviness is how wavy or calm you want the water to be. If you take it all the way to the left, have a look, the water will be absolutely calm. If you take it to the right, it will have some waviness to it. Now, here you will see there's a ripple, right? Now, you can change the position of the ripple by clicking anywhere. So, if you want a ripple here, just click there and a ripple will be created right there. If you want a ripple there, click right there. The ripple will be created there. Now, we want to create a ripple where the person is standing. So, we would click right here where the person would be standing and there you have the ripple. I'm just going to go to my previous settings because it's too smooth. The water is too smooth. We need to have some waviness. So, I increased it to about 24. Now, complexity is how textured the water is. If you take it to the left, you will see that there are very less textures. If you take it to the right, you will have more textures, depending upon the style that you're going for. Brilliance is simply the brightness of the reflections and blurring is simply how much blur you want to apply to the reflections. That's all there is to it. Now, glitter and colors are very important right there. Glitter is simply if you have sun in the middle and if you're creating a sunset scene, this glitter can be really helpful. Right now, I've kept it to the side, but you can move it to any position and have very nice glitter, very realistic glitter. Just look at it. It's so darn realistic. But then in this case, we don't have a light source right here and it doesn't make sense. So let's set it to how it was in the side since the light is coming from the left hand side. So we're going to keep it on the left hand side. And color is the color of the water and the glitter. So this controls the color of the glitter and this color is fine. Bright yellow, a little less saturated. And then we have the color of the water. Now the color of the water can depend on a lot of things. It can depend on the sky. It can also depend on the surface it's in. It also depends on whether there's moss or soil, too much soil in the water. In that case, it would be brown or green. So for this example, I just chose this dark green color, which would suit best. You you can also choose something brownish as well and just as you choose it have a look the color of the water will slightly change right so i'm going to set it to how it was before because i saved what i did as a preset now these are the settings for the ripple so how much undulation you want what's the size of the ripple you want you can modify all of this right here once you're satisfied with all of these settings just hit okay now keep in mind there's no going back you have to reapply these settings if something doesn't feel right. This is not a smart object. And that's why we have a duplicate. We have a copy right there just as a backup. Once it is applied, it's time for us to apply the same to the subject. First of all, let's name this subject. And if you want to have a copy, you can have a backup copy for it. So again, this time without changing a single setting, go to filter, flaming beer, flood two. It will apply the previous setting and we want to have it that way. Don't change anything except one setting and that is offset. So in this case, the horizon will be the same. The water is the exact same. There's just one thing changing and that is where is the water starting from? In this case, it's his legs. So let's just increase the offset. Now 16 seems to be the perfect value. You know why? Because the offset is just where the ripple point is. So keep in mind, it is at the ripple point or somewhere near. Hit OK. So there you go, my friend. Here you have a super amazing reflection. Now we definitely have to work on it. Now the next thing we need to take care of is the depth of field. Have a look. The water in the background is so sharp, but the actual background is not. So select the background layer and now you can convert it into a smart object by going to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now go to filter, blur gallery and then tilt shift. Now keep in mind, solid line is the line where the blur is zero and it gradually increases to the value you choose right here to the dotted line. So right here, the blur is zero. It gradually increases to one, two, three, four, five. And from there goes till 15 till this dotted line. And beyond that dotted line, it's 15. So let's just move it right here where the man is standing. And from there, the blur would gradually increase up to this point. And let's choose five or six. Let's go for six. Looks more reasonable. And this one looks pretty all right once you hit OK. And there you go, much better than before. So here is the before. It's just not looking realistic. And here is the after. Just a subtle little change makes a lot of difference. Now, if you want to make it even more realistic, select the background, hold the control or command, select the subject layer, select both of them, and then press control or command G and create a mask by clicking on the mask button. Then you can take a brush and then just erase it from certain areas. And by the way, you can turn off this background copy. That was just for backup. So you can just paint in this area, this bamboo right there. 
just show a little bit of depth if you want you can do something like this so that when you zoom out it looks as if it's at another angle in the water looks more realistic so you can take your precious time and work on it as much as you want you can even go ahead and start erasing some additional areas with a lower flow like 5 or 10 to create an illusion of a little bit of transparency we don't have to have it very detailed but it really looks cool let's collapse this group and name it water reflection and just so that we don't get confused, I'm just going to remove this background copy that was just for backup. You can keep it. Now, there's one more issue. If you look at the face, it's a little bit blur here and there. But if you look at the water, it's just so sharp. So why not apply an overall blur? So first of all, create a stamp visible layer by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. It'll merge everything that you see in the canvas right now into a layer at the very top that we have created. Now, let's apply an overall full blown blur to it. First of all, let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK so that we can change the values later. Let's go to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. And in this case, we're going to choose about one or two. How do you feel about that? Or let's go for 1.5. All right. A little bit of blur. It also adds a little bit of blur to the water and it looks pretty darn cool. Now we can take that away from certain areas like the eyes and the face. So select this mask right there. Keep in mind, when you add a smart filter, it comes with a mask. So take the brush, black is the foreground color. Make sure the flow and opacity is at 100 and then just erase it from the eyes, the face, maybe the hat if you wish to. And also a little bit on the hand right there because it's in the same focal plane. And after this, you can do whatever you wish. You can just notch it up with some grain, with color grading, that's up to you. I'm just gonna show you two little things. First of all is adding grain by pressing Control Shift N, Command Shift N. Let's choose the blend mode overlay. Check fill with overlay neutral color, hit OK. It'll create a gray layer with overlay as the blend mode. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK so that we can change the values of the noise later. Let's go to filter, noise and then add noise about 20 is fine how do you feel about that or let's go for 30 great so it adds some noise in the image so here's the before here's the after overall texture right there but it's so sharp the noise is very sharp so let's go to filter blur and then gaussian blur let's add a blur of about one is more than enough i guess hit OK and there you have a pretty good noise added to it just adds an overall texture just blends the water and the person well now on top of that you can also add a curves adjustment layer just take it up like this and then double click on the right hand side of the layer we only want it in the bright areas so take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right hold the alt key the option key click on the slider to break it apart to make the transition smoother and there you go hit OK now we only want it on the left hand side since the light is coming from the left hand side so select the mask create a gradient from white to black so you can just press X to switch the colors and you can choose foreground to background as the gradient and you can create a gradient like this now that we have a gradient and let's say you only wanted it on the water and not anywhere else so we can also do that by simply erasing it from the excessive areas it just adds more realism to the water so here's the before here's the after it just matches so much more with the original light now on top of this we can always slap a crisp warm by clicking on the adjustment layer icon choose color lookup and then simply choose crisp warm and also we don't want it in the shadows again it's showing black photoshop error let's click on it again all right now it's working double click on the right hand side of the layer and also take it away from the dark areas by holding the alt key the option key clicking on the slider break it apart and just take the slider all the way apart and there you have it a little bit of crisp warm really adds something to the photo so let me show you the before and after so here is the before no water and here is the after now i did not take a lot of time to create a perfect selection but you can take all the time in the world to do it now to get creative you can also place a boat start with replacing skies the possibilities are so many when it comes to adding water like this and this my friend is my final result so there you go my friend that's one of the easiest ways to add water and reflections in photoshop all you have to do is to separate the subject and the background so you have to create a background without the subject and a subject on a brand new layer and then apply the plugin both to the background and the subject first we choose the best settings for the background we apply it right there and then we apply it on the subject keeping the settings the same just changing the offset in other words just changing where the water starts and that's all there is to it after it whatever we did was just little adjustments to make it look more exciting
that's all. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in my next one, till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Oh,